Well, greetings to you all on this wonderful day. It is Wednesday, and welcome to our Power Up this morning. It is April the 26th, and hope our Power Up finds you well. We've got big day today. We've got church tonight. It's our final night of The Rock, our children's ministry. Uh, and they have the, the Rock store tonight. Uh, and it's the final final go around here. Then Friday we have the Rock Awards Night and Fair. So I hope that you will be be here tonight. And then also Friday if you can come out and help out with that. So kind of a busy next couple of days. Uh, and excited about it. Uh, and look forward to uh, to just uh, seeing our young people, meeting uh, their families, and so we'll be praying that they show up uh, for that uh, awards night and rock fair. It'll be a wonderful time. Uh, I would encourage you, if you're just now jumping on, hit that share button so that others, so that your friends can view our power up this morning with you. All right, we're going to be in First Corinthians chapter number one. The goal uh, might be a little ambitious is to finish out the chapter here. 1 Corinthians chapter number 1, finishing out the chapter. We are in verse number 25, okay? So 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse number 25. Once again, hit that share button real quick as you get on here. Let's look. The Bible says, But because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. And how true that is. Uh, and it's important for us, I think it's important for us to be reminded at times that we are that we are not God's gift to mankind, okay? That we do not have it all together. Uh, and it's important for us to remember God God is wisest of all and our his foolishness is wiser than than any of our perceived wisdom that we have. Uh, we know that our uh, that uh, our his weakness, not that he has weakness, it's just a picture. God, God is not weak, but his weakness would be uh, greater than any of our strength. And not that God has weakness, okay, and not that God is foolish. But that's just the just the picture that he's painting for us. In fact, uh, let's go, let's go there. I believe it's in uh, chapter number nine. Oh, let's look there just for a second here. See if I can find it. And just kind of doing this off the top of my head here. I don't know if this is going to be the right um, the right area of Scripture. Uh, yes, let's look. First uh, Corinthians chapter 9. Uh, you look at verse number uh, 20, 21. To them that are without law, are with, uh, to them that are without law, as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without the law to the weak. Became I as weak that I might gain the weak. Paul saying this to the weak, to the to the less fortunate. Became I as weak. I have made all things to all men that I might by all all means save some. And so we know that that uh, in uh, let's we are to not get too full of ourselves uh, to where we are not able to minister to others. And so we need to keep that in mind that that. In order to minister to people, uh, we ought not to get too prideful, and so on. And so the Lord here is saying, "Hey, I, I am, I am your strength. Uh, all wisdom comes from me. Rely upon me." And so let's not get too full of ourselves, is what we're saying here. And going into First Corinthians chapter nine as well, the Apostle Paul say, "Hey, I, uh, I, I am willing to meet people where they're where they're at," is what he's saying there, so that. They may know the truth of God's word. We also know another example of Paul's life in regards to strength and weakness. Paul had that thorn in the flesh. Uh, and God reminded Paul, says, my, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. And, uh, and he's telling Paul, listen, I will take care of you. Uh, you will have to rely upon my strength is what what God tells the Apostle Paul and how true that is for us as well. Look at verse number 26. Continuing along that same theme. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not, not many mighty, not many noble are called. And so God God is saying here that uh, to... Let's let's take it at at uh, at its simplest at salvation. Humility must be exercised at salvation. Must be. 
uh, man, man must humble himself and say, yes, I am a sinner and I need a savior. That's humbling. Okay. Uh, and then the Christian also needs to, <coughs> to live humbly as well. Here God is saying that, uh, that not many noble, not many mighty, not many wise men are called. What does that, what does that mean? Uh, I think we can get too big for our own britches, uh, to where we get too full of ourselves. We get, uh, we think that we are we're all that in a bag of chips, and God would desire to call us, but he can't use us because of our pride. Uh, and that's something that, that we need to deal with as individuals as well, as believers, uh, not allow that sin of pride to creep in, but rather saying, God, I, I don't know everything. I'm not the answer to every issue and every problem. I don't have everything. God, I need you. Uh, and, and God could call and God can use people that are that live humbly before Him. Verse number twenty-seven. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, uh, and base things of the world, and things which are despised hath God chosen. Yea, and things which are not. Uh, to bring to naught those things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. You get that, that last verse there, verse number 29, really kind of rounding out what God is saying here, the fact that God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. He chose, he's chosen the weak things, verse number 28, and the base things of the world uh, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. Why? What is the purpose? Why is it that God has chosen these things? Why is it that God uh, chooses those that, that are humble before him? Why is it that God can use those? Because that for, the, the, for that reason that no flesh should glory in his presence. Once again, that reference to pride uh, and really that reliance upon God. We need the Lord. We cannot we cannot survive without him. Everything that, that is accomplished in, in, in this life is because of the Lord. Uh, and, uh, and having that heart, having that spirit to where we say, it's not me, it's God. Uh, and we're glorifying God with how we live, uh, glorifying God uh, in that which we say, in, in all of that. Uh, and how God uses us. We cannot allow that pride to creep in and, and, and say, you know what, uh, it is about me. I am pretty good. I am pretty great. No, it's not. We are here to bring glory to God. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about the Lord. Let's finish this out. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto, uh, made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. There's a lot packed into that verse. Let's finish out. We'll go back and look at it. That according as it is written, he that glorifieth, let him glory in the Lord. Once again, glorifying God, uh, deflecting all praise to the Lord, for without him we are nothing. Now, look at a couple of these words in verse number 31. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us. And look at, uh, because of that relationship with the Lord, uh, because we are in Christ Jesus, uh, at beginning at salvation, uh, look at the the benefits and the perks, and is made uh, who of God is made unto us wisdom. Wisdom is available to us. James tells us this that uh, we are to ask of God, who giveth to all men liberally. Look at that righteousness. What righteousness do we have? Mankind's righteousness is as filthy rags, uh, but we are clothed in Christ's righteousness. That sanctification, that that setting apart, uh, we are set apart by God for something greater, uh, and really that sanctification, that act of, of, uh, we could say it's it includes a little bit of maintaining, but but it includes a large portion of that of growing in Jesus Christ and allowing God to change us into the image of his son. So sanctification is so very important. And then also redemption. What is that word? Hey, we belong to Jesus. We've been redeemed. We've been bought by the blood of the lamb. Uh, and so what that that's what we have in Jesus Christ. Uh, and, and really, you look at those four things, wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. What does that mean for us? It means it means Jesus. It means God. 
Uh, we None of this is possible. That wisdom, that righteousness, sanctification, none of that is possible aside from the Lord. Uh, and so we are to glorify the Lord. He that glorieth, verse number 31, let him glory in the Lord. Listen, we all like it when somebody, and pardon the expression, I guess, we all like it when somebody tickles our ears with, uh, with, with praising us, okay? We like that, but we need to swallow that pride and, and deflect glory to the Lord, say, hey, thank you, man, my God is a great God, and he's gifted me, or, or whatever it might be, uh, and uh, we praise the, praise the Lord. Listen, chapter number one, it's not about us, it's about Jesus Christ, uh, and that's who we are to be glorying, that's who we are to be praising, that's who we are serving. All right. Uh, thank you for being on this morning. We'll pick up with chapter number two tomorrow. Let's greet those who have commented live here today. Once again, thank you so much for commenting uh, and being on this morning. If you have not shared it, shared our power, be sure uh, and do so. All right. So here we go. Let's look at it. Uh, Ingrid, good morning to you. Love you. Have a great day. Brian and Cindy, good morning to you. Cliff and Karen, good morning as well. David, good morning. Paula, good morning. Thank you for being on. Jean, good morning to you as well. Uh, and that second comment there, praising the Lord today for my dad's 85th birthday. And that from a baby, he and my mom had us in church, taught us to follow Jesus. And so thank you, Paula, for that second comment. Uh, happy birthday, Phil. Hope you have a great day. Uh, and a happy birthday to you. And, and what, a, what a powerful legacy, Paula, and all those who are watching uh, to, to have been brought up in church uh, even before we were born from a baby on up. And to, to know and have that relationship with Jesus Christ is so, so special. All right. Uh, thank you all for being on. Lord bless you. We'll touch base again uh, this evening uh, for church. Our power up tomorrow morning. Look forward to that. Uh, and would encourage everybody, have a great day today. Hope to see you tonight. Dennis and Geraldine, good morning to you all as well. Have a great day, everybody.